Welcome to Mariposa Will and Mills Needle Felting Basics and Kit Instruction. For those of you new to felting and deciding to try a new craft, let me give you a small intro. Basically, felting is causing wool fibers to intermingle and mat together. This can be accomplished in a couple ways. Wet felting is one way, hot water, little soap, and a lot of friction. The other way is needle felting, with which I will demonstrate later on in the video. Felting needles have barbs and uh, they grab on to other fibers, to the wool fibers, as it's poked into the wool, causing this intermingling or felting. It always is best to use a surface, such as a foam or a rice pad, um, because the needles are very sharp. This kit provides all needed supplies to start this new fun, easy hobby. Let's get started. So what we're going to do is just basically work with the palette that we have, blocking out the colors um, that appear in the background. First, we'll start with the trees. We'll take a bit of roving, divide it. into st tree strips, so um, it's your own painting, so it can be however thick or thin you want the trees to appear, and we'll just place it in the trunks and the branches, and we'll work a little bit on um, blocking in the other kind of twigs later. First, we're just going to block out those first colors. So if you notice, I'm just going to twist the fibers just to make it more manageable. When I begin to felt it down, I will give it a little tug to keep a straight line. So once we have our trees blocked out where we want them to be, we'll refine our edges, give a little tugs here and there as we poke the fibers in. You don't need to go very far into the mat because the, the needle will do its job if it's just penetrating. So just repeatedly poking will begin to make the fibers felt to the mat. So just work on all the trees, get them felted down to the mat, and then we'll work on the next element. So once you've got your tree shape felted down, we're just going to add some twigs, the thinner branches, and we're just going to divide that black. So you pick, hold the roving, and uh, and then you can divide it into strips. And it's, very little is needed. So then I roll it in my fingers and poke down to the very end and give it a little tug. And as I'm poking, the fibers are going to stretch away. So then I can get the tapered edge. So just do it that way. Um, taking small pieces and giving a pull. Finger it down and giving it a pull. And if you need to pull the fibers away, as you saw me just do, but you need to hold it down because it's not totally secure um, just yet. A lot more felting would need to happen for it to be um, fully felted. It would need to be fully felted before we, if you pull on it that it wouldn't disappear. So you just need to hold it down on the edge and give it a little pull to fold those fibers away just to break the edge off just like that. 
and just add as many twigs as you want. Just keep in mind as you use the reference picture that the female cardinal is on a twig. So make sure you include one that she can sit on. Just add as many branches as you'd like. Just be creative. This is your painting. Next, we'll add a bit of gray, just at the base of each of those twigs. So we're trying to make it look like a birch tree, so if you wanted to put more detail on it, you could, using the gray and the black, making the stripes. But we're not going to do that for uh, demonstration pur purposes um, today, but um, yeah, if you want it to look more realistic, I just chose that in this painting that the cardinal in the front is the focal point so it's little detail in the back that I could get away with that's what I did so but it's up to you it's your painting so just applying that gray in the between the branches or at the edge of each of those little twigs where the tree and the branch connect you can just add a little bit of gray Next we'll just block in the cedar tree or the evergreen branches. So you see how I take the roving and then I divide it just to make it more manageable. And then I'm just going to place in where I want the branches to be, like just blocking in the color and then we'll add a bit more detail to it. At this point, it's just showing us where we want those branches to appear. Just felting those down, giving it a little more of a narrow look as a branch. So there's a little bit of tucking as I'm poking. So just felt those to completion and uh, we'll move on to the next part. So once those are, the placement of the, the amber color is down, then we'll add a bit of brown, a darker brown, just to show a shadow. And then we'll use that also to give the thinner branches and just as before, as you're poking, just give a little pull so that the fibers disappear and that gives a tapered edge, a tapered line. So just add as many as you want and then we'll move on to the next color. So next we will just be adding the green ring. So if you notice that when I pull the fibers off, there's a thicker side and a thinner side, which I'm going to use that thinner side as I poke it down to have a thinner needle-like edge. So we're just gonna block those in. and just begin poking them down. Try and maintain those thinner edges. So work down, down the, the needle of the tree so that you can have those little thin edges or thin ends to the needles. So once you're happy with your greenery, 
Then we'll just work on adding a little more depth to it for a little more highlight. So just adding that lighter green will just give it a nice little uh, highlight. So now moving on to our main character, Cardinal. We'll just start with the top of his head. Just giving a little twist to the fiber. So we're just gonna find his outline or block in his red shape and then we'll add more detail to him. Starting with the crest of his feathers and uh, and you'll see that I just kind of roll the fiber around. So working from the head to his, his back, or I guess that's his belly, so his head's turned. And then once we get past his belly, then we'll just turn to round off the bird. So as we just poke it down, giving it a nice little once over, work on the tail. So we can just pinch it off and then we'll just roll that fiber so we can get it a nice straight line put that on his tail. And you'll be able to make his tail and his body as thin or as thick as you want. You just basically want to get an initial shape. So working on the front part, or actually his back. Getting that line down. And then that's probably all the red that we will need. Unless there's some modifications you need to make to the shape of him, which that's fine. So that now we have his the shape, we're going to start adding the black under his belly, around his eyes, on his tail, the back of his wing. Just recognize the, the shapes of those colors and then you can just block them in. Don't be afraid to twist the fiber around, overlap it. But just remember, less is more. You don't want it to be too thick in an area, unless that's the color you want it to be opaque. But, uh, so you just change your needle around, change the shape of what you're doing. As you notice, I'm, I initially put the color down, but I didn't felt it very much. So you want that, this to have a nice smooth uh, texture. So you want to felt it down. So giving it some extra poking will help. So as you notice, I'm working on the beak. I'm using the bright orange to give that bright beak to the cardinal. Using tiny fibers, just little pinches. We're gonna lay in the shadow for under his wingtip. And any excess I don't need, I'm just going to pull it off. Using tiny fibers, just little tiny pinches. You can barely probably tell what I'm doing 
but the uh, just overlapping of that black will give show the color darker but I'm pinching off so very little just the tiniest bit and I'm very gently poking this in because I want the fibers to stay kind of separated I don't want to create any, any, any lines in the shadow area so don't be afraid to change the angle of your needle and then now you see that I'm going to just block in just a slight separation in his tip feathers as I said before you just want to refine his shape and just poke down all those little fluffy areas just so they you can have more of a smooth appearance to the bird now just to give him a little bit of you see his eye so a very tiny minuscule piece of fiber and I'm going to poke it down and then wrap it around my needle so that it creates a little circle and then I'm just going to try and poke it down without it disappearing totally it does need a bit more black around the eye so I will work that in now we'll just work on our phenol cardinal using the light brown rolling the fibers into a little ball before I apply it down and then just poke that in and we'll create another ball just to create her head and we'll add the details of black and that amber orange color and then her beak will be bright orange as well going to give a little bit of black to the end of her, ta her tail feathers and around her eye. So you can make your female cardinal as big as you'd like. It's your painting. If you're just having trouble seeing what I'm doing, just use the reference photo. It should be a big help as far as the colors you need. As we're finishing up our painting, just giving it a once over and just felting down what's fluffy and just needs a little extra attention. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching Mariposa Wool and Mill Felting Basics and Kit Instruction video. So continue felting and to replenish your felting needs, come visit us at the farm market or online at the link on your screen.